God bless you all. God bless you all. More grace to everybody. More grace to everybody. Well, we are here again. I'm talking about knowing the will of God. We are actually on part three. And um, I'm so excited to get into the word of God. And um, tonight we're going to be talking about when God seems distant. When God seems distant, when God has called us and ordained us to do certain things that he's called us to do in the earth, and it just seems like he just disappears, and just seems like God is not there, it just seems like God doesn't have our back. Well, tonight I want to encourage you tonight, and I want to show you in God's word what happens when this happens, and so um, what, what is going on, or explain um, to you all, and even myself, reminding myself of of what God's word has to say about when God seems like he just disappears out of nowhere and um, and we don't feel his presence. But I want to encourage you tonight and specifically talk about this because this will happen on the journey as we fulfill God's purpose for our lives. You're going to have a season in your life where God just disappears. He doesn't talk to you. He doesn't say much for a while. It could be for months. It could be for weeks. Sometimes it's for days. And so um, I really want to encourage you, and I think this is a very important part of this series as we're, again, talking in the series of knowing the will of God. But specifically tonight, we're going to be talking about when God seems distant. And so um, with that being said, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the great opportunity, like I always say, that you have given us to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ and the unsaved that may be watching to hear the word of God and to see what you have to say to us tonight. Lord, let your presence, your anointing rest with us, Lord. Rest with me here in my home. Rest with them, those who are watching God tonight, wherever they may be. Lord, let them encounter and feel the tangible presence of who you are, Father, as your word is coming forth, Father. We thank you for the word. We pray that the word of God, God, will, will shine light upon us. God will shine truth to us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for the word and what you have to say to us tonight, Lord God. Help us to have a heart to receive. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. So again, tonight we're talking about um, when God seems distant. And so tonight I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to change my style up tonight. I'm going to do a few notes here tonight and then we'll hit the scriptures at the end. So if those who are watching, if you're able to, please watch the entire time. And um, amen. So the first thing that I do want to say, we're going to start also in the book of Job. If you have your Bibles, you can go to the book of Job. But um, we're going to start in the book of Job, chapter 23. And um, this, this is just mind-blowing to me about what happened to Job. And we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. And, um, but the first thing that I do want to say to you all and even to myself tonight is this. Can you still serve God? I want to ask you a question. I want you to really think and hear me. Because now we're getting into God's word. Got to be focused. Got to be attentive. Got to be, be austere and have a listening ear to hear what's about to be said. We're in the word of God. And like I always say, this is not a game. It's not a joke. We're here to literally hear the voice of God speak to us tonight from his word. And I want you to listen to this question. Can you still serve God and trust him? When it seems as if he has distance or turned his back on you or abandoned or forgotten you, can you still serve God? Some can't. Some can. By keeping the faith and keeping their lives, their lives full of the word of God. This is how you get through this test in this season as you are fulfilling God's purpose for your life. And I really want to teach tonight. I don't want to really do a lot of hoop, you know, preaching and all that tonight. But can you still serve him and serve him wholeheartedly? No matter what comes your way, no matter what you're facing in your life, can you serve him wholeheartedly if you never feel his presence again? We're going to talk about the difference between God's presence and omnipresence and, and, and the tangible presence of God. We're going to talk about that tonight because I think some people get that mixed up. But let me read this next note here. God distanced himself from us at times to, number one, test us. Number two, stretch us. Number three, mature us. 
That is the whole purpose of God of why sometimes he, he, he distanced himself from us. Because he wants, number one, he wants to test us to realize, to see in us, how bad do they really want me? Not the gift, not the talent, not the car. How bad do you want to know me? I'm the God of the universe. I'm the God of your life. I'm your Lord. I'm your master. How, how bad do you really want God? So all of us has to, all of us have to go through this test, this trying test of when he just disappears. You can't feel his presence in the morning time when you're praying. It seems like he's not answering your prayers. You don't feel God's presence in the house of God. But how do, how do we push through that? And, and what's the reason or the cause of why God is allowing us to experience that? Number one, sometimes it's because we have sin in our lives and we must deal with those sins. Then at times it's not because of sin in our lives. Because many, many of us have experienced that. And many of, of us have experienced that. But we're not necessarily in sin. But we're wondering, okay, then what in the world is going on? You done repented. You done did all these different things. You done read. You done prayed. You done fasted. What in the world is going on? Why don't I feel that God is with me? Why don't I feel God's presence? Number two, it's because God is testing you and he wants to stretch you and he wants to mature you. So he pulls himself away or he pulls his presence away from us to test us and see how much more will we continue to press through into God when we don't feel his presence. When you don't feel the anointing of God flowing. But, and I want to say this tonight, that you can't get caught up in emotion and you cannot get caught up in just the tangible presence of God or the manifestation of his presence. See, what we feel when we're in God's presence is the manifestation of his presence. It's not his presence. You feel the manifestation of his presence. But his presence is a knowing. I know that God is with me. And you also have to know the same thing tonight. Those who are tuning in now, come to, uh, begin to share this video. But you have to learn to know a fact. Know the fact that God is with you. Every step of the way, whatever he's called you to do, you have to know this. You can't be iffy about it. You got to know that you know that you know that God is with me. Even though I don't feel his presence... Even though it's been a couple of weeks, I just don't know what's going on. But God, I, I, I move in faith. Lord, I trust you that you are still with me. And God, as what you have called me to do and what you've told me to do, I'm going to do exactly that. That's the kind of God we serve because God wants to stretch you. How, how much more will you keep seeking after the face of God when you don't feel his presence? Or will you stop because you don't feel it? Because your whole relationship with God was based upon feeling. It's not feeling. Remember, the Bible says in Hebrews, I believe it's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says that, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. It didn't say without feeling or his presence. No. It didn't say that. It says without faith. So this walk is not based upon feeling, even though we thank God that we are, uh, that we are able to feel God's anointing and feel the tangible presence of who he is. Thank God for that. But... Our relationship with God is not based upon emotions. It's based upon a knowing that God is with me and we communicate. This is a faith walk. And let me just stop for a moment and say this to you. A friendship based on emotion is shallow indeed. If you have any physical relationships that is based upon emotion and how you feel around them, it is shallow indeed, and it will not last. What are you, are, are you guys able to still be friends and still be connected even though I don't see you physically? <laughs> Same thing with God, and much more important. When I don't feel that he's with me, when I'm messing up, but in the midst of all of that, I still know without a shadow of a doubt, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to prove it to you in the word of God. This is not my words. And I always say this is not about me. It's not about what I'm saying. It's about what's in the word. <laughs> and me and my um, group of friends here, a group of preachers that I have that I'm a part of, and I love them so much that they're a part of my life, and I'm glad that I'm in their lives. 
One thing we joke around, we always say, it's in the word, it's in the word, it's in the word. <laughs> but it's true. So what I'm sharing with you tonight, it's in the word. And so let, I'm going to say this note again. And then again, I told you, I really want to teach tonight. So you got to be patient with me tonight, okay? You really got to be patient and really hear the spirit of God speak to us tonight. But here it says, a friendship based on emotion is shallow indeed. In other words, it will not last. You have to know without a shadow of a doubt. I know that's my friend. I know they're with me. I know they're with me every step of the way. Anything that I, I face, I know my friend going to be there. I know that they are with me. Not based on emotion and all these other kinds of, well, you didn't make me feel this way. It ain't about that. Listen to this. For those who are tuning in now, again, continue to share. And, and let me read this and go over this again, again, and then I'll move to the next note here. But it says, God distance himself from us at times to, number one, test us. Number two, stretch us. Number three, to mature us. If I never push you, if I never take my presence away, how much more, how, how, how much will you really come after me? You see, because a lot of times we, we base our relationship with God based upon emotion and, oh, I feel God's presence here. And, you know, we get all the emotion in it. And that's a wonderful feeling. It's a wonderful feeling to feel the tangible or the manifestation of God's presence. But can I go beyond that when I don't feel it? Do I still love him when I don't? I don't feel him. I, I just don't feel that he's with me. Things are going crazy. I have chaos going in my life. Things are not working out. It don't seem like they're working out. But God, God is saying, will you still trust me? And do you still believe that my, omni, my omni, omnipresence is still with you? In other words, it's a knowing that God is with me. Why? Number one, he lives on the inside of you. If you have the spirit of God, I want you to listen to me. If you have the spirit of God working and living on the inside of your spirit, God is with you everywhere you go. It's the same thing that he told Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 1. You can read it on your own time, Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 through 9. He tells Joshua, everywhere you go, I'm with you. You never have to doubt. He told him, don't you doubt, don't you be dismayed because I'm with you everywhere you go. Don't you ever doubt that I'm with you. Why? Because God, de God dwelt with him. He allowed the spirit of God to dwell on Joshua and everywhere they went, they had the presence of God. Again, it is an omnipresence, not just a tangible thing that we can feel. Now notice, <clears throat> listen to this, listen to this next note. It says, does it mean that you sometimes don't feel God's presence does not mean he has forsaken you because he never promised, oh, this is good. This blew my mind when I when I studied this tonight, I was finishing my, my message tonight for, for, you know, to speak with you all and from my own heart for me to live out the word of God. This this blew my mind. This blew my mind. Listen to this. It says because he never promised that he will always feel that. Excuse me, that we will always feel his presence. If you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It never, you will never find a verse that it says that my presence will always be with you or you will always, let me change that, that, that you will always feel my presence. You won't find the verse because he never promised to us that we will always feel his presence, but he did promise that he will be with us everywhere we go. In other words, my presence is on my presence. That means again, everywhere you go, I'm with you, even though you don't feel me. You have to know that. And again, for those who are coming in late, we said that another reason that we may not feel God's presence or, or, or feel like that God is with us, it may be sin. But only you can make that, make, make that, make that, you know, make that document. Say that. You know whether you're in sin or not. You know whether you're right with God. And if, you're, and if you are right with God, well, now you know, okay, he's testing me then. That's how you're able to, able to measure. If I know that I'm live, doing everything that I can to live for God and live right. According to the word of God, you know that God is not distant from you or you don't feel him because you're in sin, but it's because he's trying to test me and mature me. He's trying to get me to continue to press after his presence. You're gonna, I'm going to show you in the Bible, men in the Bible, that even God in the Bible did these to men in the Bible. And it matured them. It matured their walk with God. It developed them. It strengthened them. It made them strong and very courageous. It developed something on the inside of their spirits. And so God wants to also to God wants to also do the same thing in our lives. We all will experience this one day. 
that God will, he would just distance himself from us. He'll take that tangible or the manifestation of his presence away from us for a season to test us. And so with that being said, let's move on to the next note and then we're going to get into some scriptures tonight and see proof in God's word what he has to say to us tonight. And to back up these notes here that I have with, for you and for my own self. Notice the next note here I have. It says, sometimes God is distanced from us because of sin, but that is not always the case. I said that already, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. But we must know whether it is because of sin or because he's testing, stretching, or maturing us. Next note. Know God's omnipresence and not just the manifestation of his presence. Next note. God is more concerned. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I love this, this next note here. Bless my soul. It says God is more concerned with us trusting him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Than filling him. Let me read that. Let me, let, me, let me stop. Let's stop for a moment. I want you to really focus. Those who are tuning in now, make sure, number one, you share the video and you got to be attentive. You got to focus. You got to hear the word of the Lord. You cannot be all over the place and having the distractions everywhere. You got to focus yourself. If you're watching tonight, be focused. Number one, here it is. God is more concerned with us trusting him. You got to learn to trust him. Every step, every battle I face, I'm trusting God. What I stand on what he told me to do and what he spoke in my spirit. Despite what's going on and what's coming my way, I stand, I trust him every step of the way. I stand on God's word. Listen to this. God is more concerned with us trusting him than feeling him. Do not get addicted to a feeling, but get addicted to the omnipresence of who God is in your life. And remind yourself that the spirit of God and the power and the presence of God literally lives on the inside of your spirit. If you are filled with the spirit of God. Now, with that being said, let's go to the book of Job chapter 23. Now I'm about to get excited. I hope I don't preach because I always get excited about the word. It just does something. It, it bubbles on the inside of me. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that, but the word of God, it just bubbles on the inside of me. It makes me excited. I feel the power of God. I feel the, the fire of God just burning on the inside of me. Things are beginning to happen. You know, let me say this, that the word of God, it cleanses your insides. It cleanses you. So when I'm reading the word of God, God is just cleansing me. He's just revealing things to me. I mean, I, and, I, and especially those who are cold, those who are Pentecostal and apostolic. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Because we always, you know, always feeling the fire of God on us. You know, we, 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 we super churchy people, you know, but we have the power of God and working in our lives. Amen. And so with that being said, let's go to Job chapter 23. And I want to say this before I start reading this verse that. Anytime you're hearing a preacher or a teacher bring forth the word of God or is giving a message or saying anything, you got to make sure that you do not get caught up in their words. You got to make sure that you do not get caught up in their statements and what sound good. Oh, that sound. Oh, my God, that blessed me. You know, we get caught up in all the, the words and, and, and their sentences and all that. That's all good at all. But let me let me teach you something tonight. If they don't back up their words with the word of God, it is a joke. Do not be deceived listening to preachers and teachers tell you stuff because it sounds good and you have security in them because they are a great preacher if they don't have the book to back it up. I don't care if it's my pastor. If he does not, if he does not have proof and he cannot exegete what he is saying from the word of God, I will not, I will not receive it. You got to back it up with the word of God. Don't you ever forget that. If you ever see me preach to you, Moving forward, and I don't back it up with the scriptures. Don't you dare take my words. Now, there are, there are times where I may quote something, or there might, may, may be times where I may say a few encouraging words. But still, you should be able to take my words and take my sentence and, and break that thing down through the word of God. If you can't, don't you take that sentence. But anyways, let's, let's, let's move on. That's a side note. Job chapter 20, uh, 23, and look at verse 8. We're going to read verse 8 through 10. It says, Behold, I go forward. Now, this is Job talking because Job is experiencing that, that thing that we talked about when God, when God hides himself. So Job has a relationship with God. 
He knows God for a fact. He knows that he's close with God. But for some reason, Job is experiencing this distance from God. I cannot feel him. I cannot see him. He ain't talking to me like he used to. So, so Job is expressing how he feels about what he's facing right now. The same thing that we're going to be facing in our lives. Some of you all have already experienced it. Some of you all have not yet got there. But I'm telling you tonight that you will get there in this season in your walk with the Lord. He will hide himself from you because he wants to test you. How bad do you really want me? Do you want me more than the world? Do you want me more than that boyfriend, that girlfriend? Do you want me more than your spouse? Do you want me more than that degree that you're seeking for? Do you want me more than that job that you have making $50,000 a year, making $30,000 a year, whatever your goal may be? Do you want me more than that? Do you want me more than just churching and I'm, and I'm bucking and I'm shouting and I'm dancing and I'm giving God glory, I'm getting emotionalism, I'm getting touched by the power of God? Do you want me more than what you feel? Do you just want me? Because again, God is not just a manifestation of a, of a presence. That's not the, that's, that's, again, that is a manifestation of who he is, not what he is. It's a manifestation of who he is. Oh, I feel the anointing now. But who God is, is a, it, it, again, it, he's, he's omnipresent. It's a knowing, he, it's a knowing that he is with me. I, I, I'm trying my best to explain this to you tonight. But let's read what, what, what Job has to say. He says, behold, I go forward, but he is not there. I'm moving forward. I'm looking forward. I, I, I'm still praying. I, I'm still doing my responsibilities, but I'm looking forward and I, and I don't see him. Then he says, and backward, I'm looking behind me and I don't see God. Where is he? I don't see him. Then he also says, but I cannot perceive him. He's trying his best to find out what in the world is going on. And many of us have asked, asked ourselves this question. What in the world is God? Don't you see I'm going through hell? What in the world are you, are you right now? I need your presence. I need to cry in your presence. Where are, the, where are you, God? And then he says, but I cannot perceive him. In other words, he can't find the presence of God, the, the manifestation of God's presence. Look at verse 9. He says, on the left hand, where he does work. Now, this again, this is an, an analogy. Then he says, but I cannot behold him. In other words, I can't see him. He ain't showing me visions no more. He cut the visions out for a season. You're not, you're not being able to see into the realm of the spirit, for, you know, like he, like he used to. Things ain't flowing so easy, easily like they used to. You see, you pray a prayer, you see that manifestation happen. But God's starting to slow things down for a season. Mm -hmm. Job experienced that. Listen to what Job says. This is powerful. It's amazing. Don't miss it. He says, but I cannot behold him. Then he figures, then finally Job figures what's going on. This is what he says. God finally gives Job the revelation. Are you all ready? Here it is. He says, he hides himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. He got the revelation that God is hiding from me. I know that he's with me. Because he said in his word that he is with me. And we know that God is not a man that he shall lie. Neither is he a man that he shall repent. So we know that God isn't lying. But he says, he says, he hides himself. In other words, again, he hides himself to test us. Now, I want you to hear this note that I have in my Bible. It says, for every believer, there are times when it seems that God has hidden himself from us. Notice verse 10. It says, but he knows the way that I take. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He knows the way that you take. Don't you miss this word tonight. Don't you take tonight for a joke. He knows the way that you take. In other words, he knows exactly what you are experiencing while you're trying your best to fulfill his plan for your life. He knows the way that you take. You got to know that by the word of God. Job said it. He says, but he knows 
the way that I take. So we, so Job is saying that I'm not guessing that God knows what I'm going through. He says that God knows it's a fact that God knows what we are experiencing in our lives in this season in our walk with God. Notice Job says, but he knows the way that I take. And then he says, when he has tried me, in other words, let me translate that for you. That means God wants to always stretch our faith. So he says, when he has tried me or when he has tested me, we just got, got done talking about that, that God wants to test us. Do you really want him? How much more will you keep seeking after him? Will you ever stop seeking him? Because you don't feel his presence? Because he's not manifesting things as quick as you want him to or like he used to? Now, he'll make exceptions for baby Christians. If you're new in Christ, he'll do a lot of stuff for you quick. I mean, he'll do all kinds of stuff. Stuff back and forth. He'll bless you with a place. He'll bless you with a car. He'll bless you with a home. He does all. And, and then the, the Christians that's been saved for years, 10, 15, 20 years, we want to like, what in the world is going on? God, I've been saved for 15 years and they, they only been saved for 12 months and you doing more for them than you doing for me. You know why? Because you're the more, you're the more, more, more mature Christian. The Bible says much is given, much is required. You've been, you've been more developed in my word. I expect more from you. You got to seek a little harder than they are. They can pray one prayer and God and instantly answer that prayer sometimes, just like that. And he also does that to show them that he exists. He ain't going to do it. He most likely he will not do that for you in a certain season of your life. You know, in this season that we're talking about, when God distanced himself in this season, he will not do it for you. You got to push. You got to press. You've been in this thing long enough. You should know how to pray, pray in the spirit, you know, praying and seeking the face of God, being in prayer every morning, being in the word of God, going on consecration. I mean, we're just seeking God like my just I mean, we're just seeking the face of God hour by hour. You know, hour by hour, minute by, we're just seeking the face of God, drawing closer to you, and boom, it happens. He releases the manifestation of what you've been, been seeking him for for the last six months or, what, or however long. Then you begin to see God do great things. But the whole while, oh, I feel the anointing now. But the whole while, when you were seeking God, you wasn't just, he, he wasn't just going to answer that prayer what you have to realize, you was drawing closer to him. The whole while you was waiting on God to do that thing for you. Listen, this is mind blowing to me. You were drawing closer to God. That's the goal. That is why God just disappears from you. And he takes his presence for a certain season. To mature and develop you as a Christian. If you're going to be a Christian, you've got to be truly be willing to be developed by God. You cannot stay in one place and stay and get stagnated being stuck in one place. You got to learn to grow. It's the same thing as a child. I don't expect my one-year-old child to stay and think and function as a one-year-old. I expect him to grow up, develop, mature, and be disciplined to go from one-year-old to five years old. Then from five years old, I still expect something from my child. I expect him to what? Mature, to be stretched. To go from 5 years old to 10 years old. After 10 years old, I expect him to go from 10 years old to 5 years old. I mean, excuse me, 10 years old to 15, 10, to 15 years old. And so on and so forth. So you have to realize that our God that we say that we serve, that, that he is a true father. And if he is a true father and what true fathers do, they want to do certain things to their children to develop them, to mature them. There's a certain time I stopped feeding my son food. Learn to hold the fort, put it in your mouth, and eat it. I'm not going to keep babying him. If I do that, he, he, my son will never be mature and never develop and never grow. He can't be because I haven't stretched him. I didn't test him. And let me just say this to you. The teacher is always quiet during the test. If God is always talking to you, you never have that season of when he's quiet. Oh, boy, you better get nervous. You better ask God some questions. I always look forward to a test like this in my season, in my walk with the Lord. And I believe because God has, I have really, thank the Lord I have, and I say this humbly, that I have really drawn closer to God, very closer to God than I was last year. And I thank God for that. He's done great things in my life. God has just, just tremendously just blessed my life, gave me great encounters with him. And I really believe that I'm getting ready to move into that next season of my life where he, where he hides himself again. 
it just, just sometimes you just know. As you're seeking God, you just get that feeling on the inside. I, I think you're about to send me to that season again where you hide from me. But now, because I'm in, in, I, I am in expectation, I know how to respond to when he does disappear. Because I know it's coming. Your season coming too. In Jesus' name, thank God for that season when he disappears. Now I got to seek you harder or I'm going to have to pray a little bit harder. I'm going to have to pray instead of praying an hour a day. Now I'm going to pray, I'm gonna have to pray an hour and a half, two hours a day. Just seeking God even the more, just pressing. I'm drawing closer, even deeper in God. I'm just pressing. I'm seeking the face of God. His anointing is being increased on in my life. His power is being increased in my life. I'm drawing closer to him. He's beginning to open my spiritual eyes and I'm able to see into the realm of the spirit. I mean, he just begins to do great things after you continue to seek the face of God. Don't you ever give up on your walk with the Lord because you don't feel certain manifestations that you, that you expect from him. Don't ever give up on, me, on your walk with God. Don't you ever give up. You keep seeking. And let me say this. If Job got through it, you can get through it. If I can get through it, you can get through it. If you can get through it, I can get through it. If Job can get through it, we all can get through it. Same thing. Just like Jesus when he died on that cross. At a certain time, when he's getting ready to die on that cross, the Bible said that, that God, turned his face, God turned his face from him. Because, you know, God is so holy, he can't look upon sin. Remember, it's sin that separates us from God. So when Jesus died on the cross and he shed his blood for on, on, the, on that cross over 2,000 years ago and died on the cross, that, that means you might have life and have it more abundantly and that we may make it to the kingdom of God. You got to realize that God turned his back on him. Because now that's not just, no, it's not just my son. No, he, he's filthy. Let me, turn my, let me turn away from him. Because I can't look upon sin. I'm God. I'm a holy God. I cannot look upon sin until the work is done. Now my son can experience my great tangible manifestation of my presence again. So even Jesus experienced this, this, this in, his, in his walk. You see, being with the Lord on this earth. So if our Savior had to experience this, what makes you think you don't have to experience it? No, we all have to experience these things. And so with that being said, let me finish this verse because I do have some other verses that I want to share with you tonight. It says, when he has tried me, then he says, I shall come forth as gold. So, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. See, I'm so glad that Job got the revelation that what, what, you know, what God was doing to him. He realized that God was testing him, that God was hiding from him because he knew that God wanted to test him. God wanted to stretch him. God wanted to mature him. And when that happened and he began to mature even the more in God, he says that I shall come forth as gold. In other words, I'm going to be better in my walk with God than I was six months ago. I'm going to be better in my, walk, in my walk with God than I was a year ago. Why? Because I'm more mature. I've been stretched. I've been through some battles. I've been going through some things. I've been going through some challenges, and I didn't give up. I kept praying. I kept, I kept, I kept fasting. I kept seeking the face of God. I kept reading the word of God. I kept studying the word of God, and boom, there it is. I come out as pure as gold. I come out better than what I was. I come out sharper. I come out stronger. I come out more anointed. I come out more powerful. Thank you, Jesus, because I put in the work. Just like Job, he put in the work to be mature, more mature in, in, in his walk with the Lord. And that's what God wants to develop in us as we're on this journey and as we are seeking and, and learning and knowing the will of God. Remember, we're talking about knowing the will of God. But as we know his will and as we per per pursue and walk and fulfill his will for our lives, we want to make sure that we still know how to press through when he disappears in that season of fulfilling his purpose for our life. And that's what we're talking about. And so, again, that verse says, I shall come forth as gold. Thank you, Jesus. Let me say this to you tonight. Pass the test. Don't give up. Because if you fail the test, I'm going to tell you this secret. If you fail the test, you're going to have to take it again. You're going to have to take it again. And even when you pass it, because God loves us so much and he wants to continue to, uh, to mature us, even if we pass it, there still will be another season that, uh, that this is going to happen. Most likely it happens more than once. It just does. God is so good. 
He, he just loves us so much. He just, want, he just wants to continue to see us mature, develop. And anytime he feels us that we're getting, you know, stagnated, we're getting, you know, stuck in a certain place. Complacent is what I'm looking for. It was what I was trying to say. As the Lord see us being complacent, he said, okay, it's time for me to take my presence away from him. He need to be pushed a little bit, a little bit further. Let me start. Let me push him again a little bit harder this time around in this, in this, in this season. Let me, let me put this, let me take my presence from him again, from him again. That's the love of God. Never get upset because of, because God is trying to express his love for us. And as he's trying to develop his relationship with us, God wants to develop a relationship, guys. It's not about being churchy and being in church. He wants to develop a relationship with us. Thank you, Jesus, for your great love, your expression of your love towards me, towards us, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. And so listen to this note tonight. He lets us taste him and he pulls away he pulls away that we might come after him that is so profound thank you jesus let me also say this don't judge god based on your storm don't judge him based on based on your storm again tonight i said i was going to teach so that's why i'm taking my time tonight but don't judge god based on your storm because a storm will always change, but guess what? God will never change. He's the, the Bible, the, there it is again, it's in the word. The word of God says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In other words, he is a unmutable God, which means that God will never change. He will always stay the same for the rest of our lives. We are the ones that has to experience the great indescribable manifestation of the great glory of God. We have to experience the different levels, the different levels of who God is, you see. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody said, keep seeking. That's right. Keep seeking the face of God. Thank you, Lord. And so let me move on to some other scriptures here because I have a lot here that I want to cover with you. I'm going to take my time tonight. If you have to go, you can go. You can go back and watch the video if you need to, but I'm going to take my time. We're going to get into God's word tonight. We ain't got nothing to do anyways. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want to read Job chapter 1, verse 20 and 21 of you. I want you to see when, when Job lost everything, he lost his health. Listen, Job lost his kids. He lost his wife. He lost everything. This man lost everything. God allowed Satan to touch his life, to, to touch his life because Satan wanted Job to turn his back on God. But God said, I'm going to show you that my servant will not turn his back on me. And it's the same thing. God is allowing Satan to test us. Sometimes you may lose some stuff. But it's a test to see, did, did you love that stuff? That, did, did you love that stuff more than you loved me? You have to be willing to say no, God. Lord, despite all this, God, I trust you. God, I trust you every step of the way that I will still fulfill your purpose and play for my life. God, it may be chaos. I may not even understand everything, but Lord, I trust you. God, I trust you every step of the way. Lord, I trust you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I trust you. God, I trust you. I trust you. And so, Job chapter 1, look at verse 20. And we're going to read verse 20 through 21, then we're going to move on. It says, then Job arose and rent his mantle, talking about his clothing. And shaved his head and fell down on the ground or fell down upon the ground. And the Bible says, and worship. He worshiped God. This is right after Job loses everything. He loses his kids, y'all. This man had 10 kids. Can you imagine losing all your kids? Do you love your kids more than you love God? Yeah, I know that's, that's, that's going to hit some of us hard. Do you love your children more than you love God? That's a problem. Don't make God test you with your children. But you got to love him more than you love everybody else. I love God more than I love my son, y'all. I love God more than I love my job. And God knows that I've been through some hard tests. But thank God that I've learned and I'm, I'm maturing, I'm learning, and I'm, I'm learning to pass God's tests. Look at verse 21. It says, and said, naked came out, I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return thither. In, in, the, in other words, return unto the earth. Then he says, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
you have to realize that if you if you did lose something, if you lose something, you got to realize that if you lose it, it was God's anyways. It wasn't mine. I was only a steward of what did not belong to me. You got to be okay with losing some stuff because God might test you. And you got to realize that from the beginning, it was never yours anyways. It was never yours anyways. Job's children, you see, those those children, were, those children belong to God. They belong to him. And I, and I really want to say, and I don't have time to cover it, but I really want to say that to a certain extent, I really believe that I really believe that Job feared his kids more than he feared God to a certain extent. I really believe that. that I, I want to say that he, 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 he focused on his kids a little bit too much when it came to certain things. I really believe that. It's just what I believe. And you have to read the story. You, you, if you read it, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll be like, okay. But, but so, so God allows us to experience certain things for certain reasons. And those are some hard tests. That's a test I don't want to ever go through. Lose my child? And he lost multiple. Trust me. I, listen, I don't want to go through nothing like that. God forbid. Lord, I put you first. In Jesus' name. And so, let's, let's, let's move on. Let's read verse 22. It says, In all this, Job sin not, nor change, excuse me, nor charge God foolishly. In other words, he didn't blame God because he lost his kids and he lost his health and lost everything. And Satan, and God allowed Satan to do all these different things in his life. He didn't blame God. He said, okay, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to get to this test. You're, you're testing me. God, I, Lord, I trust you. The Bible says that he, in verse 20, it says that he worshiped God. He glorified him. He praised him. He, he worshiped him with his lifestyle and how he lived according to God's word. And whatever God spoke, spoke to Job, he did exactly what God told him to do. That's all worship to God. Glorify him, opening your mouth and spending time and just, just, just praising, just praising Master Jesus, praising Master Jesus. You see, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Psalms chapter 10 and let's see what David got to say. Thank you, Lord, for this teaching session tonight. I don't know about y'all, but I'm learning something that I got to trust God. I can't give up. I, I, I can't give up. I, I, I just cannot give up. I got to keep going. I may face and, and have some challenges in life. God may leave, not allow me to feel his presence for a certain season in my life, but I know I can't give up. I got to keep pushing. I got to keep pressing until that manifestation of his presence comes again. But I want you to notice in the book of Job, excuse me, in the book of Matthew, excuse me, in the book of Psalms, chapter 10. And I want you to notice verse 1. Now watch how David talks and see what David says. David says, why do you stand afar off? Uh-oh, it sounds like David is experiencing the same thing that Job experienced. So many people in the Bible went through this. And we're going to have the same challenges. Thank you, Jesus. It says, why do you stand afar off, O Lord? So he's not talking to man. He's not talking to his friends. He's talking to God in the, the God of all, of all gods, the God of the universe. The God that's in the third heaven, that sits high and looks low. The one that has all authority, all power, all dominion. He's talking to this God. And he says, why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In other words, I'm in trouble right now. And, it, and why are you hiding? Where, are, where, where, where is your presence, Lord? Where can I find you? Why are you hiding? He asks God a question. And I really believe... That David knew already, but he still asked the question. You know how sometimes we already know the answer to the question, but we still ask the question. I really believe that's what, what, that's what David was doing. Asking God, come on now, you know why. You know why? Because he's testing you. He wants you to mature. He wants you to keep seeking after him. And realize it's not just based on a, on a you know, uh, uh, the, the manifestation of his presence, but it's about his omnipresence. Which means that it's a knowing, it's a know that I 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 know that God is with me in the name of Jesus. And so I just wanted to read that to you. Jump to chapter 34 and look at verse 8. I'm almost to the closing sentence, the closing season to the conclusion. But look at Psalms chapter 34, verse 8. And we're just taking our time going through the Bible. And, and, I, and like I said, I really wanted to teach tonight and break some things down to you and take my time. And show you some things tonight in God's word. If you're in a rush, sorry for you. God bless you. But look at verse 8. 
Verse 8 says, oh, taste and see. That word taste means experience. Thank you, Lord. Help us to experience your presence one day, Lord. Even the more than we have, than we have already have, Lord. Get us through that season where you where we don't feel your presence. But God, get us back where we can that we can take, that we can experience your, 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 your manifestation, your tangible presence in our lives. Lord, thank you, Jesus. It says, oh, taste and see. Be able to see in the realm of the spirit. Let God open your spirit and eyes to be able to have encounters with him. Verse 8 says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Is his presence is talking up, talking about now. It says, oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. And then it says, blessed is the man who trusts in him. Blessed is the man who trusts in God. In other words, when you don't feel his presence, when you're not encountering God, I trust him. Lord, I trust you. And when you are encountering, encountering the, 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 you know, the tangible presence of the Lord, God, I thank you for the experience. Lord, I still praise you. Lord, I still trust you. Whether I feel his presence or whether I don't feel his presence, God, I trust you. You got to learn to get to that place in your life, in your walk with God. That, Lord, I trust you every step of the way. Every step of the way, I, I, I trust God. In the name of Jesus. And when that spirit of doubt, that spirit of unbelief, that spirit of fear tries to attack your life, you take the authority of God that God has given you as a believer and you declare the word of the Lord. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I trust him every step of the way because his God, because God is an omnipresence that is developed and that, it, excuse me, that is developed in my life through my spirit. I know that I know that I know that God is with me. And you got to know the same thing. Thank God for the word. And so with that being said, let's move on to Hebrews chapter 13. I'm going to get through all my verses tonight. Y'all ain't going to close me out tonight. Y'all ain't going to rush me tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the word of God. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Those who are coming in now, please share this video. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Let people be blessed by the word of God as you are watching tonight. You're being blessed by the word of God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13. I want you to look at verse 5. And we're going to read all of this, but I just want to make a, um, a main point on the latter clause of verse 5. But we're going to read the whole verse 5. It says, let your conversation or your lifestyle be without covetousness. Then it says, and be content with such things as you have. Now, this is the part that I want you all to notice. Look at the next part of this, the last part of this verse. It says, for he, talking about God. For he has said, I will never leave you. There it is. Same thing he told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. He says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So you never have to worry about, again, we're talking about that God omnipresence is with us. So even, so, so, and we know that God is not a liar. He's not a man that he shall lie. So it just said that I, it says that God said that he will never leave you, nor forsake you. So he's not going to leave you. He hasn't left you. God hasn't left you. He just has taken his manifestation of his presence away from you. Because again, I'm going to say this again for those who are still watching. Again, because he wants to test us. He wants to stretch us. And he wants to mature us. That's the God we serve. God wants to see us mature and be developed in every area of our lives. Especially in our walk with him. In our spiritual walk with him. And so that's what I wanted to show you there. And again, it says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, with that being said, let's go to the next verse, to the next, to the next book. Isaiah chapter eight. I'm almost done. I take my time tonight with you all. No need to rush. We ain't got nothing to do. Isaiah chapter eight. Look at verse seven. Verse, excuse me, verse 17. I'm proving to you in the word of God, everything that I've said before, my notes that I gave you, I'm proving to you that it came from the word of God, that, that my notes was produced from God's word. Remember, I said from the beginning that you should never just believe what a preacher tells you. You should never just believe what a, what, a, what a teacher tells you. No. do they Can they exegete what they're talking about? Where do you get that kind of information from? Did it come from the word of God? Because you got to make sure, that, especially in the last days that we're living in, you have to make sure that you're not being deceived by the devil. Because the Bible says, to, he says, beware of false prophets. Beware of, 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 of wolves in sheep clothing. So you got to always go back to the word and prove out what they're saying. If I can't find it in the word, if it's not in God's word, I'm not taking it. 
I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's me. If you can't find it in the word. And I'm not showing you no book. Don't you believe what I'm telling you? I'm telling you. Don't you believe it? Because the funny thing is, the ones that are the most closest to you and the ones that you look up to the most is the ones that are the most easiest to deceive you. Don't never be deceived. Now, look at Isaiah chapter 8 and look at verse 17. It says, I will wait upon the Lord. Again, this is Isaiah talking. Now, this is Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. He says that I will wait upon the Lord. I'm seeking him. I will continue to wait on God's presence. I will continue to wait on the manifestation of God's presence. I will continue to wait on the manifestation of what I'm, I'm looking for God to do in my life. In other words, Isaiah said, I'm going to keep seeking after God. It feels like chaos is going on or chaos is going on. And it's just, Lord, I, I just feel like you're not there. But God, I'm going to continue to seek you. I know that God is with me. I can't say that enough. And so he says, I will wait upon the Lord who hides his face. There it is again. The third, the third book. We see again, it says, I will hide. It says, who hides his face from the house of Jacob? And I will look for him. He says, so, so in other words, we first talked about Job experiencing this. Then we talked about David experiencing this. Now we're seeing that, that Isaiah is, is, is experiencing this. And all of them was extremely close to God. They, they walked in extreme power. They were, they were extremely close with the Lord. These were leaders back in those days. And Isaiah is saying the same thing. He says, who hides? So he knows he got the revelation that God is hiding himself from me. It's in the book. All you got to do is read it. It's not a, it's in the book. This telling you, it's, this is telling me, this is giving me wisdom. Remember, I always say on, on majority of my videos, if I'm not mistaken, I always say that God's word is to give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. This gives me wisdom to, 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 to teach me on what I'm, what I'm experiencing in my life. But imagine those who have no idea and don't have the answer to what they're going through or what, they're, or what they are experiencing because they don't read the Bible. Stop being lazy. Don't be so full of distractions and just all this stuff that's going on. You know, I'm a busy person, but I'll never put stuff above my Bible. I'm always in the word of God as much as possible. I might have my day or two that I miss a day because I'm human. But I will never put this put, put put other things before God's word. I need the word of God to find out what in the world is going on in my life right now. But the secret is in God's word. So learn as believers. And I want to just say this to you. Learn as believers to stay close to God by staying in the word of God and knowing that you're going to be okay. You don't have to fret. You don't have to fear. God's going to work everything out. But you got to trust him. He's going to continue to, to fulfill his purpose in your life. But you got to trust him. You got to trust him. Remember, remind yourself of what he told them in, in the Bible. That I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. That wherever you go, I will be with you. As long as you stay in him. Everywhere you go, God is with you. Whether you feel him or not. Remember, we talked about that it's not a, it's not a feeling. Thank God for the, for the, again, for the manifestation of God's presence. Thank God for the feeling. But it's not about just the feeling. And again, if he takes it away, again, but I thank God that I know that I know that I know that God is with me everywhere I go. Because every day I'm, I'm doing my best to run after him. I'm in prayer. I'm fasting. Whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm just seeking God. So that, that I know that I, that, I, that I know that I know that I know that, it, that he's with me. And not only that, but as we see in here, in the, we're reading the, reading the word of God and we see Job and we see David and we see Isaiah. We see that they know that God was hiding from them. We also want to understand that God sometimes hides from us because he wants to mature us. He wants to continue to see us seek him. And as we're doing that, we're drawing closer to him and we're becoming more developed in God. Now we are more qualified to help somebody else. But if you never go through anything... You're not, you're not qualified to help nobody else. You don't know anything. You ain't been through nothing. You ain't experienced nothing. So that's why God takes us through. That's why he hides from us. And so, again, here, the latter part says, who hides his face from the house of Jacob, from the people of God. Then it says that I will look for him. So Isaiah is saying to God, what well, Isaiah is saying about God, he's saying that even though God is hiding from me, right? He's hiding from me. He's acting like he, like he done left me, but he really hasn't left us. So he's acting like he's hiding from us. 
But Isaiah, I love, and, and I love this because Isaiah is getting, is giving his response of how he is going to react to God hiding from him. So Isaiah says that even though you're hiding from me, I'm going to continue to seek after you. He says that I will look for him. In other words, I have to search. I'm seeking. The only way I can find you, I have to seek after it. I'm searching for it. And eventually I'm going to find what I'm looking for. But you can't give up. You got to keep running after God. And so with that being said, let me go to my last verse tonight and I'm closing. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 32. I promise you this is the last one that I have written down. Second Chronicles chapter 32. And look at verse 31. And then we're going to close. I enjoy, I enjoy, you know, speaking the word of the Lord to you and for myself as well. This word is for me first, then it's for you. And um, look at chapter 32 and look at verse 31. I'm going to read all of it, but I want you to just see the latter part of verse 31. It says, how be it in the, in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land. Then it says, this is where I want you to focus at. It says, God left him to try him. In other words, God left him to test him. It says, God left him to try him that he might know. Again, we're not, we're not guessing anything. I'm not guessing nothing with God. Everything with God is facts. It's always factual. So it says, God left him to try him that he might know all that was in his heart. In other words, that God wanted to test him, wanted to test Hezekiah, wanted to show him that Excuse me, he wanted to test him to show him certain things that, that, that he needed to work on certain things in his heart. This is what this verse is saying. So God, um, the, point my, the point in that I'm trying to make from this verse is that, God, is that God tested him. And if God tested the men of the Bible, God is going to test us as well. So be not dismayed, nor fear anything, but know that God is with you every step of the way. Like I always say, keep God first, stay in faith, stay in faith, stay in faith. And that's it. That is what God has called us to do. And that is the place where God will begin to increase and, sh and, and come even in a stronger way. When he does bring his presence back, he will begin to come in a stronger way. And you will experience God like, like you have never experienced before. But don't be discouraged. And so that's all that I have for you tonight. The teaching session is over. But I, I, I want to end with this, with this last sentence that I want to share with you. I want to say that continue to trust God even when you can't feel him at times. Remind yourself of what he's spoken in his word to you. The only way to remind yourself, you got to get into the word of God. And that is what will keep you and get you through the season that you're going to face in your life when God seems as he is distanced from you. When, as, when it seems like he's left you. And so with that being said, Father, we thank you so much for the word of God for this teaching session tonight. I finally pulled it off because I always end up preaching. But Lord, I thank you so much for the word of God. Lord, I pray that we would really take heed to the words and to the word of God and to the scriptures that were shared tonight. Lord, allow the word of God to fall on good ground in our hearts, lacking nothing for our destinies and what you've called us to fulfill in life. Lord, help us, God, to go back to these scriptures and meditate on them, Lord, as much as possible. Lord, speak to their hearts. Continue to speak to my heart. Show us great and mighty things that we do not know, God. And I pray, God, that you would help us to continue to draw closer to you and not to give up when you, you know, take your presence away from us for a certain season but that we would trust you and that we will push through and experience God like we have never experienced you before. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Next week we'll be talking about some other things. And um, next week we'll actually, I'll be covering um, the last two topics under this series um, in next week. So most likely I'll come on Tuesday and, or come on Wednesday and definitely we'll have Thursday. And um, we'll cover, cover the last two subjects um, of, of this whole series. And so be empowered through the word of God. And um, like I said, keep God first. Stay in faith. Stay in faith. Stay in faith. God bless you. And I will see you next week. And be encouraged. God bless you. Bye-bye.